Okay, we're in the home stretch. Time to install the tubing. Run the tubing up through the hole you cut in the sole plate and fit the tubing into the elbow joint in the back of the inlet valve above you. One of the most crucial things you'll need to do is make absolutely straight cuts. Angled cuts can lead to crooked tubing and gaps that reduce suction power or to pockets that could accumulate dirt and clog or block the tubing. Remember, three quarters of an inch on each end of the tubing will go into a fitting. So take that into consideration when measuring and cutting. And be sure to file and deburr each end of the tubing with a knife or file before you fit it into place. Next, just apply glue to the tubing only and twist it tightly into the fitting. Now, all you need to do is measure each section of tubing according to what you need. Measure, cut, deburr, glue, and connect. It's a good idea to piece together two or three sections of tubing without glue at first to make sure things fit properly. Then mark the connections so you put them together the same way. While assembling the tubing, use clamps to hold the sections in place. Wherever you connect to an inlet, you'll also have to connect the wiring. Strip the wires and join one from each inlet to the wire leading to the power unit. To make sure the polarity is right, always attach wires of the same color to each other, typically copper to copper and silver to silver. To hold low voltage wire in place, use these nifty do-it-yourself clamps made by cutting the ends off any extra tubing. If you have two runs of tubing, you'll want to join them to the trunk line going to the power unit. These sweep T fittings are included for that purpose. But a word of caution, always make sure the curb in the fitting points toward the power unit. Otherwise, dirt, dust, and debris could accumulate and block the tubing. If you have to drill through blocks or concrete, you'll probably have to rent a hammer drill or masonry hole saw. Then, run the tubing through and patch the hole once you're up and running. Before drilling, check your local building code for special firewall penetration regulations. Your code will also tell you if steel tubing is required.